Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for November 17th, 2022. I'm teaching a series entitled Pursuing Grace-Based Success. I want you to be a success. God wants you to be success. Guess what? You want to be a success too, but we got to pursue it God's way. We got to pursue it by the grace of God. When I have, we don't earn everything by the sweat of our brow. Thank God for that. We don't have to make everything happen. You know, I know that in the world, people are like, well, if you want something, you got to go get it. You got to be a go-getter. You got to go get it. And if you want to, if you want something to happen, you got to go make it happen. I create my own destiny. I do. Well, if that's how you live, um, then my teaching is not going to be good for you, right? Because I'm saying, no, I'm saying in and of yourself, you're not good enough. In and of yourself, you're not that smart. You're not that strong. You can't, you cannot perform on the level of your calling. And so God calls us to do things that, that are beyond us. And so we have to learn how to believe in him, trust in him, rely on him and rest in him. Put it in the chat. I rest in God. I, I am resting. Watch this. I'm resting while I'm working and I'm working while I'm resting. And so I'm living with a with an understanding that I, I am empowered by the grace of God to do what I could never do without God. It's not just me, it's all about him. And so I have this super on my natural. I take God with me into every meeting, conversation, and activity that I engage in on a daily basis. I'm taking God with me on Zoom calls and WebExes. I'm taking God with me into boardrooms and discussions. And so as God is with me and he is on me and in me and with me and for me, while I'm working, I'm resting. While I'm resting, I'm working. I'm working while I'm resting, and I'm resting while I'm working because I'm entering into God's rest. God is on me. He is in me. He is with me, and he is for me. The title of today's message, Pursuing Grace-Based Success, Part 41, I'm going to talk about hearing the Holy Spirit and receiving his rest. Put it in the chat. I hear the Holy Spirit, and I receive his rest. Hearing the Holy Spirit and receiving his rest. Let's talk about it. All right, so let's get into the teaching for this morning. Uh, so we have some foundational scriptures we've been using in this series. Let me share those with you real quick. Uh, so Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through 10, the Bible says, I mean that you were saved by grace. All you did was believe. You didn't save yourself. It was a gift from God. So to be clear, salvation, eternal life that's provided to everyone everywhere, it's a gift from God. And, and what all you can do with the gift is receive it. You don't work for it. You just receive it. So you're not saved by the things that you've done. You have nothing to boast about. You have nothing to boast about. If you're going to boast, put this in the chat. My boast is in the Lord. My life is all about him. Verse 10 says, God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us new people so that we could spend the remainder of our days doing the good works that God had before ordained for us to do. So God has made us what we are. And there's some good works, works that you and I are supposed to be doing that God before ordained for us to do. So say, I have work to do. Put that in the chat. I have work to do. You have work to do. First Corinthians chapter one, verses 30 and 31, the Bible says, God has united you with Christ. Now for our benefit, God made him Christ Jesus to become wisdom itself. And the father made us right with him because of, of Jesus. So say, I'm the righteousness of God. So I'm the righteousness of God by faith. And so now watch this, because of Jesus, we are righteous. Because of Jesus, we have access to wisdom. The text says, because of Jesus, we are pure, we are holy, we're freed from sin. All of that is because of Jesus. None of that is because of, of us. And then verse 31 says, therefore, if you're going to boast, you have to boast in the Lord because you have nothing to boast about. I have nothing to boast about. I hate to bop, you know, burst your bubble, but you're not that good. At the end of the day, God doesn't bless us because we're good. God blesses us because God is good. And so we're walking in the grace of God, this unmerited favor. So if we're going to boast, we have to boast in him. Second Timothy chapter one and verse nine, the Bible says, God saved us and called us with a holy calling. Now he didn't do this according to our own works. The Bible says God saved us and called us with a holy calling according to his own purpose and grace. So he gave us a purpose and the grace for the purpose. He gave us an assignment and the grace for the assignment. He gave us both in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. That's what the Bible says. So, so it's all about him. It's not about us. We've been looking at Hebrews chapter four. I want to read for you verses. He 
Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3 through 7 from the easy to read version. I'm talking about entering into God's rest. This is what the Bible says. Only we who believe it, talking about rest, are able to enter into that God's, uh, God's place of rest. So we who believe enter into rest. I'm a believer. Say, I'm a believer. If you're a believer, you should enter into this place of rest. As God said, I was angry and made a promise. They will never enter my place of rest. He was talking about the people, the Israelites who did not believe because they did not believe. God said, you would never enter my place of rest. And they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years and they died in the desert. But God's work was finished from the time he made the world. So he's saying, but to be clear, this offer of rest was already done from the foundations of the world. Yes, somewhere in the scriptures, he talked about the seventh day of the week. He says, the God says, so on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in the scripture above, God said, they would never enter into my place of rest. He was talking about these are two different things. So the opportunity is still there for some to enter and enjoy this rest. For those who first heard the good news about it, they didn't enter the rest because they did not obey. So God planned another day, a special day, and that day is called today. He's saying, so there's some people, he says, I'm not talking about the Sabbath rest. That's a different rest. But there's this rest that I've offered the nation of Israel to enter into this rest. He says, now a certain group of people, they missed out on that rest. But God says, you know what? That offer still stands. So I planned another day. They missed out on that on it, on that day. So I planned another day. It's a special day. And that day is called today. And so there's this offer that remains for you and I today to enter into God's rest. So what does this mean for you today? Now, I do have to say something about the Sabbath because I'm a teacher, right? And so, so I, a part of today's word is not just for me to encourage you and inspire you and get you motivated. Part of today's word is for me to actually teach you about the Bible and so and how it applies to your daily living. So let me let me address some things about rest and all of this stuff. Here we go. You ready? All right. Number one, it is important to learn how to rest in God. It is important to learn how to rest in God. The late Dr. J. Vernon McGee said the following about Hebrews chapter four, because the writer of Hebrews does mention the Sabbath. So this is what he says. This is the Sabbath. God rested on the seventh day. And that was the Sabbath day. We're talking about Genesis. However, the Sabbath today is not a day that you keep or observe. Have you entered into the real Sabbath today? He says, he says, do you know what it is to trust in Christ in Christ alone for your salvation? Or are you trusting in anyone else? Are you trusting in yourself? Or have you really entered into God's rest? He says, I have a good friend of mine who's a doctor who observed Saturday as a Sabbath. Now we used to play tennis together and we got very well acquainted one with another. Now, one day after we had played some sets of tennis, we sat down on a bench and we began to have what you call a religious argument. He looked at me and said, McGee, do you keep the Sabbath day? I said, yeah, I keep the Sabbath. He looked at me real hard and he said, what day? <laughs> and I said to him, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then I started all over again on Saturday. He said to me, now, what in the world do you mean? He said, well, I understand what you think about the Sabbath day, meaning Saturday, but I also understand what I believe the writer of Hebrews is talking about when he talks about a Sabbath day, which is now a day of grace in which we live. And Christ, after he died on the cross, came back to life and he went back to the right hand of the father and he sat down. He didn't sit down because he was tired. He sat down because he was finished for the redemption of you and me. So now he says to us, you rest in me. So he says, I have a Sabbath day every day because I rest in God and I allow God to rest in me. He says, my doctor friend looked at me and said, well, I guess that's better than just having one day, isn't it? And they laughed about it. Now, let me be clear about this. I have friends of mine. I have family members that observe Saturday as the Sabbath still to this day. And uh, from Friday night to Saturday night, there's certain things like they won't cook. There's a bunch of things that they won't do. And, and they take this Sabbath rest. I actually really appreciate, like I can learn a lot from like slowing down long enough to disconnect and, and really actually meditate on God and rest from the, the rat race of this world, right? That actually is really important. But I'm not here to debate with you about whether or not we should do that on Saturday or Sunday or any other day or whatever. 
that's not what today is about. My, my point is from Hebrews chapter four, I believe that the, the Bible is very clear that there's a supernatural rest that is available for believers today. Like, like the writer of Hebrews makes it very clear that they missed out on the rest, but this rest is available. Here's another day. It's a special day. That day is called today. So God is offering us a rest. And when you enter into God's rest, there's this level of rest and peace and comfort that you have while you're resting in God on the inside that is just not disturbed by anything on the outside. Put it in the chat. Say, I have peace that is not bothered. Or you could say, I am unbothered by the things of this world. Like, when you really enter into God's rest concerning a bunch of things that I'm going to talk about today, your salvation, your relationship with God, your family, your children, all of that, when you enter into God's rest, then it's almost like you, you are allowing yourself to slow down and disconnect from the pressures of this world and resting in the fact that God's got you. Put in the chat, God's got me. God's got me. I, I don't know about you, but I know that God's got me, and I'm telling you that God's got you as well. We have to learn how to rest. Number two, rest in the finished work of Jesus and in the finished plans God has for you. Let's talk about that for a minute. The father, talking about the Sabbath rest in Genesis, the father rested uh, um, on the seventh day of creation. Now, God did not rest because he was tired. He rested because he was done. Jesus rested when the finished work of salvation was over. So what does that mean? Well, Jesus left heaven, came to the earth. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. Um, he performed miracles while he was here. He was in a, a human conduit of the divine. He suffered. They took him from mock trial to mock trial in the middle of the night. The only innocent man to ever live was convicted on trumped up charges. Um, he received 39 lashes with a cat of nine tails. He suffered. He he died and he was buried. But then after three nights and three days, he rose from the dead with all power in his hand. He walked around the earth for some time, and then he went up back into heaven riding on a cloud. The Bible says that he's he seated when he got to heaven. He sat down at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. And of course, he's coming back again in glory to judge the living and the dead. But here's my point. When he sat down at the right hand of the Father, he didn't sit down because he was tired. He sat down because he was done. Like, I mean, there's there's a level of rest that comes from knowing that there's a part of this thing that's already done. So now God gives you and I the opportunity to rest. Let me explain what I mean, resting in God's finished work, okay? So let's say that you want to rest in God's finished work where creation is concerned. Well, for you and I, what that means is that I am the creation, God is the creator, I'm resting in the fact that God created me in his image and after his likeness. Put it in the chat. I am created in the image of God. I was created in the image of God. I need to rest in the fact that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I, I need to rest in the fact that I am unique and I am, I am, I'm human, but I'm also divine. And so I don't need to, to devalue myself. I don't need to compare myself to other people. I, I don't need to be uh, uh, distressed about who I am and who I'm not. No, I'm resting in the fact that I am in, I am uniquely individual and that God created me in his image and in, in his likeness. And he called me according to a specific work and purpose. And as Jesus is, so am I in this world. When I rest in that, man, it gives me a level of confidence. I cannot have a low self-esteem when I know that I look like God, when I am created in the image and the likeness of God. I can rest in that. Say, I rest in that. You got it? All right. All right, here's another one. You can rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross for your salvation. Now, if you, there was a time in my life where I wasn't resting in the finished work of Jesus for my salvation. There was a time in my life where I thought I had to do everything right. Like I accepted Jesus as Lord. And now that I accepted Jesus as Lord, I'm forgiven of my sin in that moment. But now it's like I was taught and I thought that from now on, now I need to do everything right. And every time I do something wrong, I need to repent. And every night I would be like, oh God, I repent of every sin of commission, every sin of omission. Today I did this. Today, I, oh, I don't know, God. God, please, if there's some things I don't even remember, please forgive me of that because I don't want to go to sleep. What if I die and go to, and while I'm sleeping? and I, I don't want to die and go to hell. Now, I thought like that. Don't act like I'm the only one because I'm not. When you live like that, you're not resting in Jesus. 
You're not resting in Jesus' finished work. No way. You're trusting in yourself. You're trusting and you're relying in the arm of the flesh and God never designed. You cannot be good enough to make it heaven. You, you don't go to heaven because of you. You go to heaven because of Jesus. Put in the chat. Say, I'm righteous because of Jesus. I'm not righteous because of me. I'm not righteous because of what I do. I'm not righteous because of what I fail to do. I'm only righteous because of him. Say amen to that. He, I got my wife laughing at me. But yeah, say amen to that. Like you got to believe that at, at the end of the day, you got to trust God for your eternal destination. You got to enter into God's rest where your salvation is concerned. The issue of your salvation, I know I'm going to heaven. The issue of your eternal destination if you're born again, you are freed from the power and the penalty of sin. And you got to believe that. You got to rest in that. Say, put in the chat, I am free from the power and the penalty of sin. I'm free from the power and the penalty of sin. Sin has no power over me. There's no penalty for sin in my life anymore because Jesus paid the penalty. He paid the cross and I get to rest in God's finished work. I'm going to heaven because of Jesus. Say amen to that. Now, you can also rest in the grace of God and the grace that God has given you to do what it, whatever it is that God has called you to do while you're on, on the land of the living, right? While you're here on earth. So I know what God has called me to do, but what God called me to do is not what God called you to do. So you have to rest in your own divine assignment. You got to meditate and meditate on the fact that, look, I am unique. God has called me to do X and I'm going to, I'm going to run my race with my grace at my pace I'm not going to compare myself. The Bible says comparing yourselves amongst yourselves or comparing yourselves with yourselves. That's not wise. No, I'm not going to sit here and just compare myself to other people. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to run my race. I, I, I'm at peace. I enter into God's rest concerning my divine assignment. I, I'm not somebody else. I, I don't have what they're supposed to be doing and they don't have what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm good. I, I'm good being me. I'm, I, I'm pretty good at being Rick Pina and I'm not trying to be anybody else. And so when you rest in your divine assignment, when you learn how to rest in the fact that you are who you are by the grace of God, who you are, who you're not, it all belongs to God. Put it all in God's hands. I'm not trying to be somebody that I'm not. I, I'm, I'm at peace with myself. I love and like myself. Put that in the chat. I love and like myself. I love myself, but I like myself too. I love and like myself. I know who I am. I'm at peace with myself. I, I'm created in God's image and likeness. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. I'm a king's kid, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar, a peculiar people, a chosen generation. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the winner, not the loser. I'm the victor, never the victim. And the church said, amen. You got to love and like yourself. You got to rest in it. You got it? You resting in it? All right, let, let me keep going. So when you learn how to rest in the things of God, then the attacks of the enemy, when you learn how to rest in the fact that you know you're going to heaven because of Jesus, you learn how to rest in the fact that you are who you are by the grace of God. You're not trying to be somebody else. Then the, attack, the attacks of the enemy that come to rob you of your peace, things like fear, doubt, unbelief, stress, anxiety, uneasiness, uncertainty, and worry, all of these things, they will have no power over you. Put in the chat. Satan has no power over me. Why? Because I'm resting in the fact that that God loves me, and I know that I know who I am. I know what I'm called to do. It's hard to be a success. This series is about success. It's hard to be a success when you have no peace. But you say 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 this. I have peace. All right. Number three. Don't make the mistake of missing out on this rest. Please don't do that. Don't make the mistake of missing out on this amazing rest. I read for you Hebrews chapter four, verses three through seven. Let me read to you verses six and seven from the New Living Translation. This is what the Bible says. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But for those who first heard the good news, they failed to enter it because they disobeyed God. So God set another time for entering into that rest. And that time is today. Say today. He's, so God announced, the Bible says, God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If I was teaching on healing, I would offer you to get healed if you're sick or whatever, right? If I was teaching on salvation, I would give you an urge to get born again. I'm teaching on rest today. And I'm saying today, harden not your heart. When you hear the word, enter into God's rest today. We already studied the fact that God offered rest to the Israelites and when they were coming out of the bondage of Egypt and those who didn't receive it, they disobeyed God, they never received it. And they died in the wilderness because of it. But the text says the offer still stands. The original Greek language gives us a better understanding of what the writer of Hebrews chapter four said. The original Greek language reads more like this. There's an offer that remains from a past time. 
So in other words, it's like there's something that was offered a long time ago, and there were people that didn't take God up on the offer, but the offer still stands. So it's almost like God is waiting for somebody to lay hold of the rest that he offered the Israelites. And he's saying that rest that was offered unto them, they didn't lay hold of it. It's available to you today. And so I have to take God on up on the offer. Today, David said, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today, you can lay hold of a supernatural rest and a peace that will bless you uh, to, to, to be at peace on the inside, no matter what's happening on the outside. Listen, we live in a world where you're constantly being attacked from the enemy with thoughts of fear, doubt, unbelief, worry, stress, distressing, anxiety, suicide, all of that. We also live in a world where you're constantly being bombarded with negativity on the news, don't it? Like, like if you watch the news, oh my God, like, you know, the sky is falling. So you have the news, you have the world, you have the enemy. And so if you're not careful, you can lose your peace. You can lose your hope. You can even lose your sanity, right? And it's hard to become a success when you're stressing out and you're walking in fear, doubt, and unbelief. The Holy Spirit, part of walking with God is walking with the Holy Spirit and learning to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell you in a time where you're freaking out, the Holy Spirit will be like, slow down, son. Slow down, daughter. Be not afraid. Relax. You can rest. I got this. Like you are in my hands and I got this. And one word from God can change you from the inside out forever. Say amen to that. All right, number four. The offer to enter into God's rest is available today. I want to drive this home and then I have number five and I'm done. Today, listen, today, put it in the chat. Just in the chat, just put today. Today, divine rest is available to you today. It's, it's available. You can enter into God's rest. Today, the Father can deliver you from negative stress. Today, anxiety can fall off of you like, like water falling off of a duck's back. I mean, it's available to you today. Today, supernatural peace can flood your heart and your mind. The time is now, right? You can tap into supernatural rest today. So don't keep waiting to receive something someday. That someday is today. And today is your day to enter into God's rest. Number five, as I close, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, when I preach, I, I sometimes kind of mention that while I'm preaching, I'm preaching the written word of God, meaning what God said in the Bible. So I'm preaching the written word of God, what God said in the Bible, that's called logos. That's a Greek word, logos, which means the written word of God. So when I'm preaching, I'm preaching logos. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit is preaching rhema, right? Rhema. Rhema is like a spoken word. So I'm preaching the written word, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit is, is preaching a spoken word. So while I'm teaching today's word, you're hearing a voice behind my voice. While I'm teaching today's word, you're hearing words behind my words. So I preach logos and logos can cut and make an incision. But when the Holy Spirit speaks, he's speaking rhema. And, the, and when rhema comes, it cuts with precision, causing you to make a decision. So the point is that while I'm preaching, the Holy Spirit at the same time is speaking to you. He's speaking to you things that are tailor made for you. And so David says today, when you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. I'm talking about rest. Today, there's this supernatural rest that's made available to you. Today is your day. Today is your day to, to enter into God's rest. Today is the last day. Say this. Put it in the chat. Say it out loud. Today is the last day. Or no, say it this way. Let's do it by faith. Say yesterday was the last day I would ever stress. Stress has no power over me. You got to say that. Stress has no power over me. Anxiety has no power over me. I, I, I refuse to delve into depression and thoughts of fear and doubt, unbelief and despair. I am never helpless because I'm never hopeless. God is always on me and in me and with me and for me. Come on now. Today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Enter into God's rest. Put in the chat, I am entering into God's rest. Somebody, Wanda said, today I'm free. Yeah, you got to be free. Free from this distressing anxiety, free from the, the pressures of this present world. Enter into God's rest. You got it? Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to speak this over your life. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about grace-based success. I also thank you for teaching me to enter into your rest. The offer for rest still stands. I receive it by faith. I can rest internally 
as I pursue your best for my life. And your supernatural rest keeps me from unnecessary stress as I seek to be successful. I died to self and I no longer trust in the armor of the flesh. I no longer strive to be a success on my own. I rest in your grace, your mercy, your peace, and your favor. I also thank you, Father, for the word behind the word and the voice behind the voice, the rhema behind the logos. So in addition to reading your word, I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And he tells me that rest is available to me today. I will not harden my heart. My ears are anointed to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. My heart is anointed to receive it. And by faith, I lay hold of it. Today, I enter into your rest. Today, I have changed and I will never be the same. Greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. Tomorrow we're going to have another one. So listen, do me a favor. Enter into God's rest so that fear, doubt, unbelief, distressing, anxiety, thoughts of depression, despair, none of those things will have any power over you. God wants you to rest. He set up another day. That day is today. Harden not your hearts enter into God's rest. Do me a favor, two things. First of all, if you're not getting my notes, go to todaysword.org, click on, you get the notes for free. Click on the big red subscribe button, put in all your email, I mean, your email address, you're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Also, leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you, and then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I love you. God loves you more. Have an amazing day. Enter into God's rest. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to set up a coaching and mentorship program, and Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity, and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. And then lastly, I published a book and several journals, and we also have Grace Life gear. You can find all of that information at rickpina.co. Go to rickpina.co, and that's your one-stop shop to be able to access all of the products and apparel that we have available for you. Thank you for being a blessing to us, and we pray that we continue to be a blessing to you.